This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's remnant here at God's Church of Love online. Gather together on every Saturday at 12.15 p.m. Pacific and every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific. We are reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, ah. <laughs> and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope makes not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen. Now, a lot of times when we go through our various challenges in life, we wonder why. We wonder, do we ever get to have a vacation? Do we ever get to have fun? Do we ever get to play? Well, let me share something with you. <clears throat> If you can learn, if you can gain understanding while you're right in the thick of things, when it seems like things are coming against you, things are fighting against you, things are being set up as obstacles in your way, seems like your progress is happening in slow motion and you're wondering, what's it all about, Alfie? Well, let me tell you. When we go through whatever we go through, every single challenge has a lesson. You're going to learn something about life or you're going to learn something about you or you're going to learn something about God. The bottom line is whatever you go through, whatever you're dealing with, make sure you're in a um, position for learning. Always be ready to learn. You don't know it all. You're not the genius you think you are. You hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> a lot of times, one of the faults of people my age or older is we think there are very few people who can tell us anything and everybody needs to listen to us. But I, even right here on this computer, have had little minor challenges and annoyances and I have learned from little 11-year-old kids because it didn't bother me that they wanted to give me advice. Why? Because I knew they knew more than I did about this mechanism about this whole online cyberspace system. I don't mind learning from a child. But when you get to the point where you think nobody has anything to tell you, <clears throat> what can they teach me? I've been around the block 20 times and they're, they're, they're still wet behind the ears. You better open your ears and listen. There's nothing worse. They say, <laughs> let me say it my way. The only thing worse than a fool is an old fool. Don't be an old fool. I don't care if you're in your teens or if you're in your 90s. Don't be an old fool. I don't care if they're two or three years old. If they're one-tenth your age, you can learn from anybody if you have an ear and a mind to learn. And when you learn, you gain understanding. With all your knowledge, with all your wisdom, 
The Bible says, get understanding. That makes a big difference when you're going through life. I'm going to share a story about something that helped me understand why I got so frustrated and angry about certain things. And I'm going to share what that certain thing is. All right. <clears throat> I had a dream. And I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to share with you what my issue was. I had a dream that a friend of mine show you why you need to pay attention to your dreams. God speaks to us in a, a, a myriad of ways, music, poetry, literature, uh, uh, programs, conversations, the word of God in prayer through his Holy Spirit. God speaks to us in many ways, even through his angels at times. All right. But anyway, here I am in a dream where God's speaking to me and I'm not getting it yet. In the dream, I'm really thinking this is happening. My friend is going through a bunch of old pocketbooks, deciding which she was going to throw out to make room in her closet. And as she's throwing the pocketbooks out, I stumbled against one because I'm sitting there with her. And I found this beautiful pocketbook. It looked like a a Mediterranean style pocketbook. I mean, it's look like something you'd find in the Middle East. The fabric, I mean, the design, everything. I was flabbergasted by it. And I asked her, I said, are you going to throw this out? And she said, yeah, you can toss it over there. I said, wait, wait, can I have it? Yeah, I was just going to throw it away anyway. <gasps> Thank you. And I'm just looking. I mean, it looks expensive. It looks classy. It looks elegant. You know me and elegance. I love all that. I'm just looking and looking and I'm just opening it up and examining the interior. And it was in pristine condition. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe she didn't want it. Next thing I know, while well, I got it in my hand and I'm just falling in love with every second, with every glance. She reaches out and snatches it out of my hand. Just snatched it. I, I was like, what are you doing? And, and, and she said, oh, I changed my mind. And I'm like, but you gave it to? And she said, yeah, well, so-and-so uh, uh, -so might be coming in from out of town. I just thought about it. And she might want it. Oh, 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 you talk about steam coming out the ears, my heart pounding at 100 miles an hour. I was livid. I was hurt, too. Initially, I was hurt. And the anger followed. Now, I'll tell you why. The Lord showed me in that dream. I always had issues with other people being preferred over me. Let me share this with you. Even on YouTube, people are always quick to leave links and say, oh, check this out. Check this out. This is really a good video and all that. And my mind goes back to that hang up and I have to ignore it because I know where it came from. Understanding makes all the difference. So instead of me getting all emotional, I'm just like, okay, quit tripping and move on. People just do that. Now, I don't mind it, but my question, I always want to ask them, well, why are you so busy sharing other people's videos who have thousands and thousands and millions of views on their channel? Are you thinking of passing mine on to somebody too? See what I mean? That comes from back then. So I have to battle that all the time because people mean no harm. They're doing what they do. They're not doing anything wrong, but I have to battle that because it was an issue with me from childhood. So what got me was the Lord brought my mind back to when I was a little kid. And in when I was a little kid, uh, the Lord reminded me that I had a balloon. And my mother always made me feel like a second-class citizen. She made me feel like the retard. She made me feel like the weirdo. She made me feel like something that was, you know, sent from out of space that nobody could get. And she made me feel like I was a creep. 
So um, in this dream, I mean, in this uh, memory right after the dream, the Lord takes me back to when I was six or seven years old. I had this big uh, yellow or pink Mickey Mouse uh, balloon. It was a helium balloon. There was no face, no features. It was a plain balloon, but it was helium with the ears and the facial shape. And that thing stayed inflated so long that I thought that might be a permanent fix. I was excited about it. So I handled it very carefully. I didn't mess with it. I was, I was becoming attached to my little balloon like a doll baby. And uh, <clears throat> I came home from playing outside and I went in my bedroom and my balloon wasn't there. And I'm looking on the floor to see, did it hit up against something while it was moving in the air and something bursted? No. I come out and said, Mama, where's my balloon? And she said, oh, I gave it to the little baby over there. She had company, a woman with a little toddler. And they wanted to occupy the toddler, so she chose to use my balloon. I didn't realize how deeply that cut me. It's so simple. It's so silly. It's a balloon, for goodness sake. But it said, it spoke volumes to me of how my rights didn't matter. I was thinking as a child, remember that. I was thinking as a selfish, self-centered child that wanted my things to myself. I was, you know, all my brothers and sisters were way, old, were way older than I was. So I was basically like an only child. All my stuff was mine. I didn't have to share. So I wasn't used to all that. And I was hurt because my mother never thought to ask me, which one of these toys, you know, will you allow the baby to play with? She didn't acknowledge me at all. She just went in there and got what she was going to do and gave it. And it didn't matter what the baby did to it because in her mind, it was only a balloon. But she, she had no clue how important that balloon had become to me. So to me, what that said again was, here we are with a baby she never met before, and the baby's needs are more important than mine. I know I was a child. Come on, y'all, give me a little slack. But that's what it said to me. My mother would go and hug other children. Come on, give Auntie Edie a hug. When I wanted a hug, she would say, come on, Patty, make it quick. You know you give me the creeps. So I had to grow up knowing that she welcomed everyone else and tolerated me. And as a result, that created an issue of me battling other people preferring everybody else but me. It's a sensitive area even now. Even though God has revealed it to me, explained it to me, I understand it. That makes it a lot easier to deal with. But it didn't totally stop it from being a sore spot. Isn't that something? So what we have to realize is when we go through life, if we have an ear to hear, a heart to understand, a mind to learn, we will learn so much, not only about life, God and everyone else, but we'll learn about ourselves. And as we learn, the more we understand ourselves, the more patience, tribulation work with patience, <clears throat> the more patience we have for others, the more patience we have with others and their flaws, the more we understand our shortcomings, the more we're patient with other people's shortcomings. The more you understand you, the more you'll understand them. That's the bottom line. God will give you understanding, but you must acknowledge him. You must talk to him. You must ask him questions like this. Why does that bother me? Why does so-and-so get on my last nerve? Why does it bother me when so-and-so says things like that, when they do things like that to me? Why does it bother me? Please tell me, Lord. God will begin to open up your mind 
and introduce you to you, the mysterious you that you have no clue about. He will open you up to you. And the more you understand you, the better you'll do in life, the better you will you will navigate through life, the better you will handle the obstacles, the challenges. You'll handle things a lot easier. You won't be so quick to fly off the handle because you'll realize that this is bubbling up in me. If I'm boiling inside, there must be a reason. And if I can get to the reason and the core issue and blanket that in prayer, get God to heal that issue, that will no longer have power over me to hinder me and stop me from moving forward in the things of God. I used to have issues with other people being picked over me. I'm right there, been ready, will enable, volunteered everything, and but they got somebody else in mind. Thank you, but no thank you. That used to drive me up the wall all from that one experience. See, it's not just that, but other things that my mother would do. It's all from my mother. And God healed me from so much damage that my mother had done. She didn't do it willingly. She wasn't trying to, 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 to tear me down. But she had her own demons to battle. And, and the only way she could, she could handle it, because she was not saved at the time, I was the only defenseless one in the family. Everyone else could fend for themselves. And she wanted an easy fight. When she needed somebody to take it out on, it would be me. And one of the things a lot of you don't know, my mother had a nervous breakdown a few years after I was born. I mean, the whole kitten caboodle, the hallucinations, the whole nine yards. She went through all of that. So when she came back and she was doing all this verbal damage on me, my father, unfortunately, had to keep reminding me he, was, he wasn't nice about it. You know your mother's still crazy. <laughs> so he was trying to undo the damage, but the damage was done. It was done. And God is the only one who could undo that kind of damage, especially when it comes from your mother, the one you need the most. So what I'm saying is, whatever you go through in life, you have to have a heart, a mind, a spirit. You have to be willing to acknowledge God. That's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Now, <clears throat> we just had a quick discussion. I was laughing because it lined right up with this. God knows what it takes to get through to you. He knows how to get a message across to you. And he'll speak to you in different ways. But again, you have to listen. Now, sometimes things come hard for a reason. Now, when I took cosmetology, I had to deal with a whole bunch of foul attitudes and funky dispositions and all of that. I had to keep forgiving <clears throat> again and again and again. Yes. And I had to do it patiently with grace. <clears throat> yeah, when my mouth wanted to show them I could cuss around them so fast, they'd feel like they were being wrapped up as a mummy. But I had to do it God's way. Now, didn't I? Yes, I did. Didn't always enjoy doing it God's way because my flesh wanted to do it my way. Yeah. As I went through the course, I learned something else about myself as well. See, I'm talking about learning. Tribulation works patience, but you got to learn in every moment. What I learned about myself is this is why school bored me. When I went through cosmetology, it was bam, 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 bam. They were constantly shooting new information. We had to learn the anatomy of the bones and the fingers, the arms, the the feet, the the head, the mandible, the the oh, occipital and all. We had to learn all that stuff. 
<laughs> yeah. Then we had to learn the chemicals and the, the color wheel. And we had to learn a lot of different things. Now, what I want to share with you is I couldn't figure out why, as annoying as that class was, because I enjoyed the subject, but I hated the class because I had to deal with all these crazy personalities. But the learning side of the class was exhilarating for me. And I couldn't figure out why am I so exhilarated here, but when I was in school, I was daydreaming everywhere. It was because they were throwing information at me quickly. We were getting tested without being warned. We were being quizzed, pop quizzes, sit down, do a finger wave on this. Tell us why, what, chemi uh, what chemical is in, um, uh, is, is in uh, uh, curl perms. I'm just saying it that way so you understand. Perms, you know, you get the little jerry curls or the spiral, whatever. You're getting those little perms, yeah. So they would ask us all these questions. What chemical is in that? What chemical is in the color? What chemical is in the relaxer? All these different chemicals, we had to learn all that. Now, what I want to share with you is <clears throat> when I went through that class, I felt like I was on a roller coaster. I mean, I was the thing was constantly at top speed. But when I finished the class, I aced my final. I passed the, uh, the state license thing at, at, on the first round. And I, was, I went over my test five times before I got up and I was still the first one to leave my, my, uh, the testing area where the state has you sit and take the test. I was still the first one to get up and leave. I wasn't trying to beat anybody. I was just doing it the way my mother taught me to do it. She taught me a lot in spite of all the little emotional wounds. My mother was a good teacher. So I learned how to take tests. And I'm telling you, all of these things, all of these experiences, if you're willing to learn while you're in the middle of them, life will be so much easier. Don't be afraid of a challenge. Tribulation works patience. Patience works experience. Now you're learning, you're getting understanding, you're getting insight, you're growing. And experience, hope. The more that happens for you, the more opens up to you, the more hope you gain along the way. The more hope you gain, the further you can reach. Because hope feeds your faith, too. So my point is, whatever you're going through in life, whether you have a difficult family member, whether you have a difficult, uh, a difficulty dealing with certain types of people, whatever your challenges are, Always go back to the drawing board, which is God, and ask him what is in you that's so jacked up that makes it so hard for you to deal with that. Because once you understand that it's not as hard anymore, you're not so quick to just react. You think, you reassess, you adjust your thinking to, okay, that's me. Not my brother, not my sister, but me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. This is a personal problem. And they just stepped on one of my personal corns. Not their fault. This is on me. So help me. You stop being so judgmental when you realize how flawed you really are. But being flawed is not for you to be condemned. Being flawed is to inspire you to go to the one who can unflaw that issue in you, who can heal it, who can remove, uproot, and free you from it. But are you willing to humble yourself and ask God for that kind of help? 
Are you even willing to acknowledge that you need it? Some of you, you know, a lot of times in society, we talk about narcissistic personalities. That's a hot topic nowadays. Narcissistic sociopaths and all that. Do you realize narcissism comes from a deep root of fear? Do you realize that? Anytime you must control everything that goes on around you and you must micromanage and everything you do, everything everybody else does has to come through you. Don't you realize that's an area of fear because you must be in control. Why must you be in control? Take a minute. Ask God why. Why must you be the one they believe? Hmm? Why must you be the one they listen to? Why? Are you a guide to the blind? What's going on in you? What insecurities and fears are going on inside of you that you must prove that you are the last word on everything, that you know it all? What's in you that people must look up to you and call you by your title? How dare you call me by my first name? What's in you that needs that? What makes you need that? Maybe a good time to sit down and have a power hour with God and ask him, Lord, where does that come from? Because I really would like for you to heal it. It seems to bother everybody and I don't know why, but show me. Show me me. Hmm. It'll change how you treat other people in those sensitive areas of your life. It will change how you respond to people when they step on those sensitive corns on your toes, your emotional toes. It will readjust how you react, what comes out of your mouth. You will think twice and speak once. Once you go through enough, see, the one thing you have to understand, if you put a bunch of ingredients in a pot and you're you know, making soup or broth or whatever you're making, and if there's any meat in there, that's flesh, talking meat, you boil that for a long time, what's going to happen? All the impurities, all the scum is going to rise to the surface and you'll have this nasty looking foam on top of the soup, right? What do you do with that foam? You skim it off and drop it down the drain. You get rid of it. You get rid of it. Now, life will boil your behind. I'm serious. Life will boil your behind. What is one of the original forms of sterilization that they did back in the day? They boiled. They boiled their instruments. Now, if your behind is getting boiled, always ask God to help you get the truth out of it, help you get understanding of what's happening with you what God is trying to rectify, purify, cleanse, and heal in you. If you keep your mind focused on what you need to do, you won't have all day to point the finger at everybody else because you got enough on your own plate to clean up. You won't be so quick to be judgmental. You won't be so quick to be impatient. You won't be so quick to be intolerant. If you have the right mind, the right heart, the right spirit, you will grow with every tribulation, with every hardship, with every obstacle, you're gonna learn something even if it's no more than why it bothers you so much. Why is Jack constantly jumping out the box when you're in this stressful situation? Why? 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 If you can manage your mouth 
and you can subdue your own spirit, you can be a phenomenal leader. But you can't lead anybody else anywhere you're not willing to go yourself. So if God's raising you up to be a leader, the first thing you have to do is humble yourself in the sight of the Lord so he can raise you up. And unfortunately, the humbling process comes through tribulation. So many things God does when you go through trials, when you go through setbacks and frustrations. There are things... I have to battle through myself. I have areas in my life of laziness. And when certain challenges come up, I have to say, Pat, this is on you. Just handle it. Just handle it. And the more you handle it, the less you'll dread it. Just handle it. And then I'm asking God, help me. Because I know this is my fault. It shouldn't have gotten this bad. It shouldn't have gone this far. This problem shouldn't have, you know, shouldn't have turned from an anthill to a mall to a mountain. It's on me. I can't blame anybody but me. Either I procrastinated or I just didn't handle it. Then I got to ask God for mercy while I'm trying to get it done in time. Now I could be mad and say, why are they picking on me? Every time I look up, they... Every time, every time, no, 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 no. Quit pointing the finger out there. Start looking in the mirror. You and God get down and dirty. Your underwear does not come out dirty. That's going to sound gross. Your underwear is not dirty because the material is cheap and the manufacturer didn't make the right kind of material. No. Your underwear is dirty because you're not cleaning yourself right. Now, when you clean yourself right, things don't come out so stained. Ask God to help you clean your spirit. Ask God to help you clean up your attitude. Ask God to help you grow. Ask God to open your eyes so that you can see. It is not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I'm the issue here, not them. When I get my act straightened out, they won't bother me. Okay. I hope I'm not sounding like I'm fussing. I'm not trying to fuss. I'm trying to make a point. And that's a family trait. <clears throat> I learned that. And when we get all excited about what we're talking about, we get real emphatic. But I'm not fussing. I'm really not. So God bless you. <laughs> be encouraged and be willing to look at yourself before you look at the faults of others and ask God in there to help you do the cleanup. God bless you.